I'd like you to do me a favor and tell me if you recognize this video clip. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 If you answered yes, there's a good chance that you were a fan of the television show The Office. The Office was a comedy sitcom that aired between 2005 and 2013 and was based upon the city of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Now, it was never filmed in Scranton, but several businesses and landmarks were featured in the episode, so today, we're gonna do an e-bike tour showing you several of those locations and also a few locations that are not part of the show. Now, if you're not a fan of the show, that's all right too because we're still gonna see many different parts of the city and checking out some very interesting things. And the way we're gonna do that is with my new mode of transportation. Today, I'm riding on the KBO Breeze, a commuter style e-bike that I feel is the perfect bike for a video like this. I will give you more details about it later on in the video. But I do encourage you to watch to the end because at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you something that's brand new to the city that was added just a few weeks ago. With that being said, come along with me as we do the office tour in the Electric City. Now, funny enough, I've actually never watched the show. I've seen maybe two minutes of an episode. I've seen a lot of clips online, seen commercials, but I never really got into it. But I do know there's a large following of it. And the only characters I remember from the show are, I think, Scott and Dwight. Those are the two that stand out. So if you are a fan of The Office, feel free to comment down below with who your favorite characters of the show are. But right now we're at our first location. This is a location that's not related to the show, but it's one I did a video on many years ago. And it's a place I love visiting from time to time just to see how it's uh, kind of taking shape, so to speak. So we're down here at the old DL, Delaware Lackawanna Rail Yard. And this is more or less a graveyard for old Alco locomotives. They do have a large collection, and most of these that are here are basically not in service. They're for parts, maybe for scrap. Some of them maybe for future restorations. But they do have a new rail yard and shop in Green Ridge, just a few miles away from here. So most of the active working updated equipment is stored and maintained there. But you can see various locomotives in various states of disrepair and they have quite a few of them well over a dozen i believe some of these are old conrail as well and there's some rs units and we'll go around to the other side and see what's over there on the other side now and we are presented with the triplets 4118, 4103, and 4068. These are the, I believe, RS3 units, which are operational and actually got pulled behind an excursion to Girlsboro train station years ago behind these units. I can't remember if it was two or three of them, but these three are operational. As we look behind the no trespassing sign here, which we're going to respect, there is a snow plow there, a big wedge on it, and blue, number 959 former Conrail unit. And there's also some various rolling stock mixed in, flat cars, box cars. The former repair shop is right there. I'm not sure what they're utilizing it for now, but they do have a much larger updated facility in Green Ridge, Pennsylvania. So our first office location brings us to the Southside Shopping Plaza or Shopping Center. And from my research, I determined that this was a place that wasn't shown in any of the episodes, but it was talked about. And it's straight ahead of us, known as Alfredo's Pizza and Restaurant. I believe in the one episode they do order pizza, and they were wondering where it came from, and they mentioned this place, and we're glad it was this and not a different place that has reportedly bad pizza. So Alfredo's Pizza and Restaurant here, Southside Shopping Center on South Washington Avenue, is our first location mentioned, featured in the office television show. Location number two from the office is just past the plaza at what is now known as Idle Hours Entertainment, originally known as Southside Bowl. This is a bowling alley and inside of it is a pub. And I believe you get access to it on the side here. This one is known as Poor Richard's Pub. So it's right inside there. I'm not going to go in, obviously, but Poor Richard's Pub is an actual place. 
and it's located inside the former south side lanes now known as idle hours entertainment also just off of south washington ave right next to the south side shopping center we're now in downtown scranton right in front of the former rockies lounge a place that has a very negative reputation to it but the reason we're here is because directly across from it is the radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel, our next location featured in the television show, The Office. This place is one of the most amazing hotels I've ever stepped foot into. And if you've never been inside and you're ever in Scranton, make a pit stop, check it out. You'll be blown away. But the best part of it is that the history of this is that it was a former passenger station. Trains used to come here daily to pick up and drop off passengers heading towards their destinations. But... This is one of the iconic structures here in Scranton, and it's something that you really have to see to believe, especially on the interior. Quick side note, if you're ever in Scranton looking for other oh, goes a train. That's Steamtown, Nickel Plate 514. As I was saying, if you're ever in Scranton looking for something to eat, I highly, rec <laughs> highly recommend Coney Island Lunch. Do you mind? Coney Island here on the corner of Cedar and Lackawanna Avenue. There is another Coney on Lackawanna Avenue about a hundred feet away. This is the one I like. I always get myself the Texas cheeseburger and garlic truffle fries and that is a go-to here in Scranton. Never disappoints. And a quick mention too if you do like video games check out Batari right across the street. Inside is a nice collection of arcade and pinball games that still take quarters. You can also get a drink and a bite to eat, but they have an incredible collection of video games. A lot of fun to spend a couple hours in there with a cup full of quarters. Next on the list is here on Lackawanna Avenue, Boscov's and the Marketplace at Steamtown, formerly known as the Steamtown Mall. This was built here in the 90s when they imploded this whole block of buildings. And this was the biggest and best mall in the area at the time. And now it's kind of a shell of its former self. Boscov's is the only major anchor here. But Boscov's and the marketplace itself have been mentioned and or featured in the show. Today, though, you will have just um, a variety of things in there. Unlike a mall, there is a fitness center. There is college campus. There is, I believe, a doctor's or dentist office. But Boscov's is the only remaining anchor. Only real reason to come shopping here. And worth mentioning because it is part of the show. We're now here at Courthouse Square, kind of the centerpiece of the city. And there's one particular location that I want to show you that is featured in the show. And it's directly ahead of us. Right there, Scranton, the Electric City sign. Now it's hard to see it during the daytime. It does illuminate at night, but it's more than just a sign. It's actually a meaning and a purpose tied to the city of Scranton. Now here's a fun fact, a did you know? It says, did you know that Scranton had the first commercially successful U.S. electric streetcar system in 1866. Scranton had over 90 miles of trolley car tracks and 170 trolley cars that were transporting over 16 million people annually. And you can now ride a restored antique trolley at the Electric City Trolley Museum. So that is why Scranton is known as the Electric City. It had the first electric streetcar service. I always thought it was due to just electricity, but it's actually much more than that. All these streets were lined with rails and people were transporting all about on trolleys. Still at Courthouse Square and our next location is not something that's related to the office, but something that is more personal to me. And it's this building right now, it's undergoing renovation. So this building has kind of transformed over the years as far as businesses go. Most people from the area especially from the 90s, know this as Tink's. Tink's Entertainment Complex. It was basically a three, actually four floor bar because they have a basement that had a bar as well. But it was a place that had really great musicians playing here, dance parties. They had a dance club up on the second floor, I believe. And they used to have a boat, like a canoe with skeletons in it as the exterior, I'm sorry, exterior facade. So Tink's Entertainment Complex is what this is originally known as. 
to most people who are from the Scranton area, especially going, going through the 90s into the early 2000s. After that, though, it did shut down, got renovated, and opened up as the Scranton Hardware Bar. Hardware Bar is a bar that was featured throughout different cities. There was one here, one in Wilkesbury. There may have even been one in other states as well. That opened up in 2010 and actually got hired for the opening to work security as a bouncer. So Hardware Bar had a stage on the first floor and we had people play here like Vanilla Ice, um, who else? Coolio, uh, trying to think who else was here. Uh, Big from Robin Big was here. There's many, I guess you could say, artists and people who were famous from the past that did play here. Did have some rock shows as well, but upstairs was the dance club. Third floor was used usually for St. Patrick's Day for overflow crowd. They had a temporary bar up there and the basement was a bar as well. So I worked security here on weekends. It was a lot of fun. And you know, the people that were basically cut off had to leave or just didn't know their limits. We had to personally escort out and more than one occasion, there were fights that took place in this alleyway that we had to basically help break up. And I even chased an individual behind that building the one time because he kicked and broke one of the doors. So I do have a good bit of history with this location, at least as when it was the hardware bar. And also upstairs here too, right in that opening, used to be an Elvis statue. I don't know if it was there from Tinks, but it was there during hardware bar days. And now the building is undergoing renovation. I don't know what it's going to be. Specifically, but it is a fine dining restaurant, live music venue, downtown living. And the people that are responsible for it, JBAS Realty. Well, that's the same company that bought the Red Carpet Inn. And they allowed me to explore that before it got demolished. So if you remember that video, the Red Carpet Inn, just a few blocks away, it did get shut down. He purchased it, allowed me to go through it and document it before it was gone. So if you haven't seen that video, it will be linked down below. But he is someone who's been basically kind of revitalizing the city and I'm sure this will be top-notch once it is completed. We're down here now in the corner of Vine Street and Penn Avenue. That's because our next location from the show is Penn Paper. They even have the Dunder Milton sign up there. This is a building that's definitely prominently talked about if not shown or mentioned whatever the reference is to the show but it's been in it multiple times. I do know this is one of the major landmarks from the show but up there one side is Penn Paper, other side says Dunder Mifflin and I'll take you over there by the front window where there is some more signage showing you that this is indeed the same structure and or business from the show. I'm not certain, but I think that's supposed to be Steve Carell, known as Scott. But right here it says, welcome office fans. You're welcome to come in for pictures in the lobby only. Associates and customers are present. Thank you for your cooperation and for visiting. So I'm not gonna go in, just wanted to show you the outside, but I guess interior portions were probably shown during some of the episodes. I did stop off here at another location which is more personal to me, not related to the show. Right here though, I've always wondered what this is. I know it's related to the railroad because the tracks come right by it. I don't know if this was a type of switching tower or a watchtower, but definitely an upper level for someone to be up there, even with a little balcony on it. But if you know what that is, or what it was used for, let me know. Directly across the street though is Steve Shannon Tire and Auto Center, formerly known as Sandone Tire and as one of my former employers. So I did work for two tire companies growing up and this was one of two. And what we're looking at, and the reason I wanted to talk about it briefly is because this big open area where these cars are parked, there was a massive warehouse there. It used to be a refrigeration plant where they used to have ice stored in there to keep things cool. And in between the walls, they had sawdust for insulation. So it was originally like an ice house. It had multiple floors, had freight elevators, and later on became a tire warehouse stored with tires. Well, right along there, well, I should say originally back in the day, this was serviced by track. The tracks are still going there. So it used to be serviced by rail back in the day before it was a tire company. But where those cars are parked used to be the box trucks that we would drive. Now, I don't remember the year, I will put it on the screen and also link the video down below, but the warehouse part did catch fire and it was a massive fire that could be seen for miles and from towns away. So if you just imagine a really old warehouse with wood dust, wood shavings, wood chips as insulation, sawdust, and tires, that is like the 
ultimate fuel for fire. So fire companies from all around basically worked on it for days and it just took so long to extinguish it and eventually just started crumbling in on itself. There were cars in there because in the back part was a service garage. So cars got ruined and crushed. It was just a really bad catastrophe that took place for this business. Really set them behind and they were forced to get another warehouse in another location. And eventually I believe they sold out to Steve Shannon. But I do have some good memories here. They were a good employer back when it was Sandone Tire. Now we are going to be heading away out of the city for a few more locations related to the office. But before we do that, I do want to take a few moments here to tell you about today's mode of transportation. The KBO Breeze. A really cool looking bike. I love the color on it. They do have different color options. I did offer the bright orange. So it's nice to see that there's other options out there besides black and white, which is most common out there. It does come with a lot of great standard features. And just to tell you some of the features about it and some of the controls. So you do have faux leather grips. They're comfortable. I mean, they're not fantastic. I've had worse on bikes, but they are suitable. They're okay. Give your bell right here. Front and rear mechanical disc brakes, so they are going to be easy to maintain. Your control module here is bright and has big numbers on it. Long press to turn on and off as you saw. Plus and minus for your pedal assist. Odometer, trip, time, max speed. And does have your speedometer and battery level right there. Does not come with the phone mount. That is mine that I did put on there for today's video. Seven speed uh, Shimano system. Half twist throttle. Does come standard with the fenders and the rack. Does have a handle here on the seat, easier for picking up. The front wheel is quick release, so it comes off in just a matter of seconds. Powering this is a 48 volt Samsung LG battery, which is housed right here. It does come out with provided keys, so it's a name brand battery. And it's powering a rear hub 500 watt, 750 watt peak motor. And it does have a max speed of 20 miles an hour, estimated range of 55 miles. Of course, that is dependent on your weight the pedal assist mode and the terrain but it is lightweight comes in at only 62 pounds and is a commuter style e-bike as you can tell by the tires they are skinnier and taller than other bikes i've reviewed these are 27 and a half by 2.4 inch tires and they're more i guess you could say geared or designed for the road not so much off-road they are not as aggressive so it's more of a road tire you do have a headlight here so you do long press the plus button it will power on the headlight right there and also does have a working brake light slash tail light on the back there it also does have front fork suspension but no rear suspension and after riding it so far i do have a couple pros and cons i do want to share with you and i am going to be brutally honest but i'm not going to be over exaggerating things but number one the seat the seat is decent i always give seats a rating i rate this one a three out of five it's not bad if you're riding for 30 minutes or less, it's perfectly fine. If you're going to be doing longer distance rides, you're going to want a thicker, cushier seat. With these tires though, although they are great on the road and they are designed for the road, I could definitely tell a difference in the ride comfort. All the bikes I've reviewed in the past are fat tires, whether they're 20 or 26 inch, I could feel a difference. This does not handle the bumps and bounces as well as a fat tire bike. Those fat tires do give a little bit of extra cushion and bounce. They only hold 20 pounds of air. These hold 30. These are a bit taller. But again, this is a commuter style bike. It is designed for roads like this. Now it can handle trails, light trails, such as like packed down gravel, small crushed stone, but it's not an off-road bike. It's not designed for that. So it's not a high speed bike, but it is able to keep up with city traffic. And doing what we're doing today is what it's intended for you know jetting around the city going through town running to work running to the market going to a friend's house the front wheel is quick release comes off in just a matter of seconds and when you remove the battery the bike's even lighter so it's going to make it that much easier for transporting it in the back of your car or on a bike rack but there are different colors available if you want to find out the current pricing you can check the link down below in the description i do want to thank kbo for reaching out to me and allowing me to check out the breeze and to share it with you. If you're looking for a commuter style bike, looking for something that has color options, not overly powerful, lightweight, and has a comfortable riding position, check out the KBO Breeze. On to our next.
location, which is one of the coolest themed restaurants in Scranton known as Cooper's Seafood House. This is heavily themed after pirates and nautical and ocean life. Everything from statues to a lighthouse to even a giant octopus on the top. Coming in here, you can see it is decked out. Every inch of this place is covered. And straight ahead, more reference that this is featured in the office. There is six of the characters. I do know two of them. If you guys know the names of the rest, tell me down below from left to right. I do know Dwight and Scott, Steve Carell. But yes, the Cooper's Seafood House is one of a kind place here in Scranton. There used to be one in Pittston, Pennsylvania. That one I have dined at, this one I have not. And I've never been inside of this one, but I do know that it is heavily themed out as well. I think there's even a train that runs around the inside. But there's, as I mentioned, uh, just the whole thing, a whole lot of things going on here. A lot of picture opportunities as well. Up on top of the deck, there's a giant octopus or squid. We've got the shark hanging here. So a lot of, like I said, unique photo opportunities. The pelicans, the lighthouse, and even the, the landscaping is unique because all this white here is clam shells or oyster shells, whatever you want to call them. So these are what they use for landscaping. So attention to detail is pretty good. We've got the pirate here with the cannon. So if you like this type of theming, like seafood, I would definitely check out Cooper's in Scranton here. making our way further out of the city and I have another pit stop I wanted to show you here. Pantuso Motors showroom. This is a former car lot and I don't know if it's still open for business or not. It's not open today. It's never been open each time I drive by but inside there are several beautiful classic cars. Right there in front of us is a Pontiac. It's like a pearl white color. Looking through here, we do have a, a Chevy, all blacked out. It's actually uh, really dusty. It looks like paw prints on the back of the trunk. And the one to the far right actually has a flat tire with some stuffed animals inside. This one says Nash. Is that a Nash Rambler? It's a big car though. Looking at it, it was last inspected in 96. It's actually really covered in something like insulation. Yeah, I don't think this is open anymore. I don't know what they're doing with this. Looking in the background, I can actually see insulation falling out of the ceiling, out of the drop ceiling. And it's all over the car here and actually on the floor to the right there. You can see the remnants of the sign, Pantuso Motors. So if you've ever maybe bought a car here, or shopped here, or know anything about it, or know why it's closed, feel free to let us know. Even outside in the lot here, they have a few vehicles, including a limousine, Cadillac. There's an old Mercury. Newer Dodge Ram plow truck. It looks like a apartment's on top. These are the kind of caddies you'd see in Vegas back in the 90s. Cadillac limos. Now passing Lackawanna County Jail. And we're back here on North Washington Avenue because there's still something back here tied to the show. And it's just up here on the corner. Corner of New York Street and North Washington. And it is known as Andy Gavin's Eatery and Pub. Another location featured in the office television show. Coming back on North Washington, we're going to make a right on Walnut Street. And there is another location that isn't so much shown or mentioned in the show, but it is related to the show. Once you'll see it, it'll make a whole lot more sense. So we came down Walnut, made it left on Kapaus, 
there's a business up here called On and On Marketplace. And it's around the side of the building is what you will instantly recognize. There it is. Dwight himself. Big mural of him on the side of the building here. So I don't believe, and I could be wrong, you're welcome to correct me, if this business or building was featured in the show. But it is at least paying homage to the show. And just say there's merch inside. So if you're looking for some office merchandise, Dunder Milton stuff, come to On and On here on Kapowski Avenue, just off of Walnut. This location here, as far as I know, is the furthest one away from downtown that is related to the show, which means we have to go back to downtown. I have a lot of ground to cover, actually a, a few miles. And we have two more locations to check out. The next one has a small tie to the show, but it's actually more personally enjoyable for me. And the other one, the last place, is something that's brand new to the city. So that's still coming up. So what I'm going to do is mount you guys right here, speed up the footage, add some music, and you can enjoy our ride back to our next location. Location that was either briefly mentioned or briefly shown in one episode is none other than Steamtown, home of the big boy, 4012. I just wanted to take a quick ride through here to show you what it looks like now with the fall colors. There's the big boy. I have done a lot of videos here. I've done a video specifically on the big boys, so if you want to see those, just check out my Steamtown playlist. I've always said this is one of the most photogenic locations in Scranton or in the area because there's just so many opportunities to take different photos of the different pieces of equipment. Some of them are in really bad condition. Some of them are cosmetically restored. You have ones that are operational. You have Alco locomotives because DL does share the yard here with Steamtown. So you have a, a nice variety of equipment and rolling stock to take pictures of and whether you're just starting out with photography or or someone who's really proficient in it there's just countless opportunities here and it's one of the places i've always enjoyed coming to to walk around take some pictures take some video and just appreciate all the different pieces of rail history and also in the same parking lot is the trolley museum you can learn about the Electric City history with streetcars and trolleys. You can also buy a ticket to ride a trolley from here all the way to PNC Field and Music. And it's a fantastic ride. So got Steamtown and the Trolley Museum all in the same location. Now that we left Steamtown, that means we have one final location. It's a location that I guess you could say I'm saving the best for last, depending on how you look at it. This is something that was just added a few short weeks ago. It is 100% for the office, paying homage to the office and also honoring the city of Scranton. So I don't know if it's been shown in other videos before, but we're heading there right now. I'll not only tell you where it's at, 
I'll share some history about it on screen and show you what it looks like the newest addition to the city of Scranton related to the office. So we're here at the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue. Just to put things into reference and perspective, just around the bend up there is the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel. The red light is Cedar Avenue. To the right is Coney Island, where I eat lunch at. The secondary Coney Island is right here. And the newest addition to downtown Scranton, the city of Scranton, the Electric City, is right here in this parking lot. An incredible mural honoring the office and Scranton, the Electric City. This has all the characters from the show on it, even some sayings, that's what she said. Identity theft is no joke, Jim. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. So I'm sure some of those do make sense to you. World's best boss in front of Steve Carell. It says the office story of us mural by Hagopian Arts and Kala or Kayla Hagopian. And there is even an information plaque. Now, if you didn't know, and you are a huge fan of the show, you can actually come here and do a, your own walking tour. There's a downloadable map. You can even scan this with your phone and you can embark on the office self-guided tour. So we'll show you where everything is. And there are footprints throughout the city with um, like a light bulb on them showing you that you are heading in the right direction. But this is just recently added. I believe the artist did do this in sections out of the area and it was transported here and erected so to speak it's bright vibrant colorful and really is summarizing what the show and the city is about i love the scranton electric city sign right in the middle of it with the light on top all the different sayings all the different characters from the show some of them are so well done it almost looks like black and white photographs but those are hand painted so a very talented artist who did create this and it is down here 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue and I figure this would be the culmination of our tour today showing you that they really do pay homage to this show and even though it's never filmed in the city it is at least here showing you that it is based on the city of Scranton better known as the Electric City. Brought the bike over here just to kind of frame it up with the big art piece here now, this is my first time doing something like this as far as a tour i have done somewhat tours in the past not really like this though this did take a bit of an undertaking to research all the locations and as mentioned i'm not a fan of the show i have nothing against it i just never really got into it but i do know there's a large following and it does feature the city of scranton that's why i did it because i wanted to show you different parts of the city and different parts in the show. And if you are a fan, you certainly recognize a lot of the things we saw today. The bike itself did perform well. I did share my thoughts with you, both good and bad. I will say it's a really comfortable riding position. Really comfortable, you're not hunched over, you're not too straight, it's near perfect for comfort. But it is a stiffer ride. 
with these narrower tires and the only having front fork suspension, it is a stiffer ride. But if you get past that, it's lightweight, it's not overly powerful, it has nice color options, and you saw firsthand how it performed in a real world situation. I told you my thoughts, both good and bad. But ultimately, the choice is yours if you think this is indeed the bike for you. The link for this and everything else I mentioned today will be linked down below in the description. And I did share my thoughts throughout the video today as to the locations that we checked out. So I want to hear your thoughts. If you are a fan of the show, tell me what your favorite location was that we saw. If you're not a fan of the show, tell me what your favorite location is of the city that we saw. With that being said, I just want to thank you for coming along for today's e-bike adventure through the Electric City. Hopefully you learned a few things not only about the city, but also about the TV show and some more about myself as to where I worked here in downtown Scranton. So thank you once again. I had a great time. Hope you did as well. If so, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, browse my playlist. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel for more fun adventures. As always, I'll see you in the next video.